this video just a very quick review of units and how to handle them in many of the problems of this course. Uh, as you will see, handling units correctly is paramount to your success in solving problems correctly. As a matter of fact, sometimes uh, really the only challenge in solving a problem is just simply knowing what equation to use for a particular property that you're trying to calculate, but then uh, being able to actually enter all of the information into that equation in the correct units, right? So, so again, uh, knowing how to use units uh, is going to be quite important in this course. Uh, you're going to have a choice of what units to, to use for some problems. Uh, the recommendation is to use whatever units look more convenient to you. Uh, and if there's doubt of what units are more convenient, then the recommendation is to always use SI units. And as a matter of fact, those will be the preferred units for most problems, if not all. All right, so what we do in this video then uh, is, is review uh, SI units and then talk about prefixes and uh, base and derive SI units. Well, it turns out that SI units uh, are very simple because in one equation you have uh, everything enter into SI units, then the units of the solution will also be SI. And that is the beautiful thing about SI units. You actually know what the answer uh, units will be if you know if you if you're putting everything into SI units into the variables of that expression, right? So then the key is to know what are the base SI units, and then the derived SI units for the properties that you're interested in. All right. So here we have the seven um, uh, SI base units, and as a matter of fact, we're actually only going to be using the top five in this course, so you can. Uh, already put a parenthesis in the last two because it's something that we do not use in thermodynamics. Uh, for the rest, you have that for the length, uh, the unit is going to be the meter. For mass, the unit is the, is the kilogram. And this is kind of important because in chemistry, we generally like to use grams, sometimes milligrams, and rarely we use a kilogram because that's a really uh, large amount of material. Okay, but still, if you're going to solve your problems with SI units, then you must use kilogram. Okay, time will be second, temperature Kelvin, uh, and this will also be a little contentious because most of the problem statements will give you temperatures in uh, Celsius. And as it turns out, I don't think that there's any problem that you can solve in which uh, the, the, uh, you will get the right answer using the temperature in Celsius, so the conversion of Celsius to Kelvin should be automatic. Okay, and to finish with the base units, we have here moles. All right, great. Obviously, these are not all of the units that uh, we will be using in problems. For example, uh, in this set that we have here, we don't have units for pressure or for energy. Right, so it turns out that those units for pressure uh, and energy are what we called derived units, and they emerge naturally from combinations of these base units. Okay, so just to illustrate this point, we can perhaps talk about energy. Maybe we can write here the equation for uh, gravitational potential energy, which is this mass, the gravitational constant, and height, and then see what the units of energy would be, uh, seeing how they derived from these base units. Okay, so for mass, what we have here is that that should be a kilogram. Right, so the gravitational constant, this is an acceleration, and an acceleration, which we can write here as A, is its length, or distance, over time, squared. All right, so we go to the base units, and we know that the unit of length is meter, and then time is second, so instead square is meter second squared. Okay, so then we have that these units are going to be meter second squared. And then height is also a length. Okay, so we we'll multiply here by a meter, and it turns out that then uh, all of our units for energy are going to be kilogram meter squared second, uh, to second to the minus two. All right, so that is an example of what a derived unit, unit is, right? So starting from base units, we get to a derived unit, which is going to be the kilogram meter squared second to the minus two, but of course, in to avoid writing this huge amount of units here, we redefine this simply as one joule. Okay, so the joule 
is the S unit for energy, uh, but notice that it's at the right unit because it's the same thing as one kilogram meter squared second to the minus two. Right, so that is at the right unit and there's going to be many, many uh, other properties that we're going to be interested in, which will be the right units. Right, so to wrap up this video, I'm going to remind you that uh, in addition to having the units, sometimes we like to use prefixes, right? So for example, uh, taking the kilogram, right? That is that if you divide that by a thousand, then you will have a gram. If you take that and divide that over a thousand, then you will have a milligram. Uh, divided over a thousand, you will, you will have a microgram. Divide that over a thousand, you will have a nanogram, and so forth. Okay, so those prefixes are in the book, and they're important to know. Uh, we're actually only going to be looking most of the time at uh, three orders of magnitudes, right? So, so again, we will go from kilogram uh, or meter to millimeter, micrometer, nanometer, and so forth. And those are just 10 to the minus 3 uh, or 10 to the 3 decreases as we move forward. And again, there's a summary for that in the book. Now, to wrap up this video, uh, I'm just going to summarize this. This has been an introductory video to units. Uh, and the idea here is that if you're in doubt of how what units to use in a problem, you can always resort to SA units. Those are the ones that are always going to give you uh, the answer that you're looking for in SA units if all of the units of the variables that you're putting in are in SA units.